Uh, so hello, hello everyone. Um, in the next 10 minutes or so, um, I'm going to try a little bit to get you up to speed on uh, InfiniBand, where InfiniBand is going, and in particular to look on InfiniBand 40 gigabit per second, which uh, Melnox has announced um, this week at the show, and you can see various demonstrations on the show floor. Um, InfiniBand is an industry standard high-speed interconnect that was designed to provide best efficiency, best scalability, and best performance for um, clustering and storage. The specification is being driven by the uh, InfiniBand Trade Association, the IBTA, and they've released uh, this week an update to the InfiniBand roadmap, uh, which calling out InfiniBand 80 gigabit per second to 240 gigabit per second which is estimated to go out uh, or to hit the market in the 2010-2011 timeframe. Uh, and there, there is being work being done to add higher speeds, uh, which, gonna go, uh, which gonna be out in the following years afterwards. Um, we are at ISC, so we need to uh, talk a little bit about the TOF 500. Uh, and this one is the, this is the data from the new TOF 500 list. Um, Two things that um, are interesting. One is to map the solution across the TOF 500 and to see where each of them um, is being mostly utilized. And as you can see, InfiniBand is the most used solutions in the top 100. And if you can combine till the two, top 200, you're gonna see that InfiniBand is still um, leading the top 200 interconnect solutions. And that shows the scalability and the efficiency that InfiniBand can provide to large, large scale clusters or HPC clusters to maximize the performance that you can gain out of them uh, for your applications. Um, another way to look on uh, the performance growth in a market is, for example, to look on the total performance that the InfiniBand clusters provide. And you can see that from list to list, there is a huge increase in the performance that InfiniBand provides with those clusters, and especially with the last, uh, uh, last release. Uh, which InfiniBand is being used to connect the uh, fastest supercomputer in the world. A uh, quick uh, slide on Melnox. Uh, Melnox is a leading InfiniBand provider, providing InfiniBand end-to-end uh, -end from adapters that goes to the servers and to the storage, um, and ICs that goes into the switches. Um, right now the products are, uh, as we announced this week, uh, providing 40 gigabit per second, uh, with latency of one microsecond latency, and making sure that the transport is being handled by the hardware to provide very low CPU overhead. Um, looking on the performance that you can achieve with Connect X, 40 gigabit per second, uh, in a matter of bandwidth, utilizing uh, Intel server with PCI Express Gen 2, um, ability to deliver almost 6.5 gigabyte per second for MPI. And uh, for latency, uh, almost one microsecond latency, end to end. Um, there are some other factors that people typically look on, on performance. Uh, one of them is MPI message rate. I think Ronlux is providing the um, highest message rate for MPI, which is over 40 million messages per second. And when you talk about multi-core and latency, um, it's more important to look on scalable latency. Uh, what is the latency that each process is gonna see when you have multiple processes running between system, not only single process. So there are two examples of uh, eight core server and 16 core server, which we had the maximum number of processes per cores running between two nodes. And you can see that the latency is flat. Um, for any uh, amount of processes that you're running on a system, which means that each process or each core can see the same low latency um, and getting the maximum performance, providing the maximum performance and scalability for, for applications. Um, this slide talks about the Infini, InfiniScale 4, which is the new 40 gigabit per second switch. Uh, we increased the number of ports from 24 to 36. Uh, which provides the ability to build bigger switches with less hops and less components uh, and looking to provide a better switching capability for petaflop uh, or petascale uh, error. Um, 
some data to compare, if you can compare it to other technologies, uh, InfiniScale 4 provides 6x the switching and data capacity, and 4x the storage I throughput if you compare it to leading 10 gigabit Ethernet or fiber channel options, uh, and meter of latency uh, 10x lower end to end latency, uh, which is important for latency sensitive applications. Uh, we also looked on the needs for the petascale computing, computing when we designed the Connect X and the uh, InfiniScale 4 switch. Um, and we tried to gather all the needs that you will need to um, address, need to address in petascale systems. One of them is to, of course, uh, get a bigger, a bigger throughput, a higher throughput, because there are more processes running. You need to provide the throughput capabilities for each of them. So you want to get the biggest pipe that you can have from the server to the network. So that's moving to infinite 40 gigabit per second. And then adding more ports in a switch enables you to build larger switches and to scale to many nodes. Um, so that's one of the reasons to go to 36 ports. Uh, looking on networking capabilities, uh, we look to, add to, uh, to address the issues or the different communication patterns that you can see in a cluster. Uh, one of them um, is random, uh, is, is solving random network streaming. It's, this is the case when your application have random, com random communication patterns. Um, and in order to get maximum efficiency from your cluster, um, a good solution for that is using adaptive routing. Um, in a case when you have a known communication patterns, uh, there are several applications, for example, uh, that are using shift patterns, then the best approach here is going to be static routing or multi-path static routing. And then, of course, the last issue that you need to um, solve is the case of many servers sending tra traffic to a single server, which you, you can create, you, you create congestion in the fabric. And neither adaptive routing or static routing are going to solve that uh, issue. What, uh, the, the best approach here is to have full hardware congestion management uh, that can real-time deal with those congestion points and throttle the bandwidth in order to eliminate them. So taking adaptive routing and static routing and congestion control uh, and put that inside of a single switch, you get the solutions that address the needs for the petascale computing. So that's what we did with the new switch, and that's, uh, that's the message that we're delivering um, outside. Um, when we looked on the 40 gigabit per second and then looking ahead to provide the 80 gigabit per second, the question if there are applications that can leverage from it. Um, definitely um, applications that are being used by government uh, or labs uh, can take full advantage of higher throughput. Um, but we tried to see what happened in more commercial side. So we took two applications that are mostly used. One of them is Fluent from ANSYS, which is a CFD application, and the other one is a car crash simulation, LS Dyna from LSTC. And we tried to look what happened when you grow in the number of nodes in a cluster, and what's the um, average message size that uh, those applications have been using. Uh, and please know that the scale here is logarithmic, so every small increase is a very big increase. Um, for both applications, we saw that the majority of the messages are basically in the range of 64 kilobytes. And if you take into consideration that you have several cores uh, sending data in this kind of message size, uh, that's delivered the needs to bandwidth. So as the bigger pipe that you have, the higher bandwidth that you have, you're going to see better performance with uh, not only um, special application, but also with, com with many commercial applications as well. Um, I think that's the last slide. Um, in order, we, we are happy to work with Opera and Intel um, as part of creating an alliance, HPC alliance, that can work with end users in order to try to tackle more issues, um, assure that uh, we get best performance and best efficiency. Uh, so if anyone else wants to join our, um, uh, our council, which deal with HPC issues, I'm uh, more than happy to send email to hpc.com or approach me afterwards, and uh, we can discuss more details.